Let's go and create our single product view. We're gonna click add new, we're gonna go over here and we are gonna pick single product. Before we use single post for the single post template, now we do single product. Let's click that and give it a title. Click create template and Elementor does give you some pretty nice you know, layouts that you can start from. Maybe you're new to Elementor or working with products. You can reverse engineer or just work with these place holding wireframes they give you. Like I said, we've gone and copied what we had in the single post template. If you're not following through and watching all the videos, I strongly recommend you do that. Right, over here, we're gonna get rid of the item here. This is a short code. Remember, we pulled through the sidebar short code or the template. Let's just kill that off. And then over here, we have an image, we got some items, etc. I'm gonna leave the featured image here at the moment. We are gonna modify this. We're gonna go over to our title that is currently a dynamic tag to the post title. I'm gonna hit the X. We're then gonna hit the dynamic tag and we're gonna scroll down until we get to product title. Let's then go over to our child container that we have here. Remember, the layout for this entire container is set as a row. So we've got a header and then we dropped into child containers that sit side by side. The heading, which is a product title, has a custom width of 100%. If you had set it to be something like that, this is what would happen. It starts to wrap on, not wrap onto itself. It starts to then almost sit in line because the width of this is not very big. By setting it to be a full width 100, it means that the child container cannot sit side by side because it's now... Well, you can't exceed the 100% unless you went and did some absolute or fixed positioning. Let's now go over to this image, which is currently called the featured image, which after refreshing the page is now converted to the image uh, of the actual product. Sometimes this can happen because I've gone and pasted in from the single post template, it brought that over. If that ever happens, just uh, hit publish like this, by the way, and then you'll see the save close option here. Just hit save close. We're not adding any condition yet. Go and refresh the page as well sometimes and it brings it through or sometimes just by luck it does it like five or ten seconds later. So don't feel like you've got to delete it. Of course though I could have got rid of this completely like that and then said give me the product image and if I just drop it in here and we then get our image. Don't worry about the resolution of it because I know it doesn't look very sharp and then we got if there was any variation in that you would also get that down here. Now, if you don't want to go for this view, we did do a video where we had a completely different way of doing it, where you just drag in one featured image or even an image widget and then use the dynamic stack and it will only ever give you one image. And then you could drag in a gallery widget, which would then show you the product galleries. The only drawback to that though is that if I was to now click on over here, the, well, it kind of swaps over. Whereas if you have them as two separate widgets, what would happen is when you click it, it actually just opens up a light box, which isn't kind of maybe the best way to approach it. Currently at the moment, the size of this is ridiculously big. So let's go and modify that. Let's go over to our first container and I'm gonna make this be, and then the second child container, I'm gonna make be 60. I'm gonna pick up my short description and drop that into container number two. Pick your custom fonts, make it a size of 1.2. I'm going to go and grab the WooCommerce uh, breadcrumbs as well like that. By the way, I just want to point out something. If I just quickly update, save and close and show you this on a preview. If you were to click, I mean, the Roma is not going to take you anything. If home is just going to take you back to the main website. But if you click on backpack, it takes you to our products archive page. So, you know, the template we made, we have the we have the shop page that has the filters but the one that just shows you those items, remember we set that up, That this is again the reason why I've done it this way. So you now go straight into that. If you'd enabled any reviews for people to do, you would obviously drop that in as well, like the product rating. We're gonna drop in our product price and we might as well go and drop in our add to cart as well. That does not look nice at all, I know, trust me, but we're gonna modify that. Let's just go over here. Let's make this be a little bit darker. I've increased the side of container one just to be 45 and decreased this to go from 60 to 55. I don't need to though. I mean, one thing you will notice though, if you look at the size of that, we do already have a bit of padding over there. If you remember the child container number one already gave us that. So you might want to adjust things if you feel like they're, you know, they're too close to one another. 
Let's now just modify the add to cart. It is currently set as an inline. If you were to go for stacked, you will get this look, which again, you could go for, but I think the inline just works and looks a little bit smarter. Going to ensure that we're definitely using the custom fonts there. And then I'm gonna follow through the color scheme that I've used elsewhere. It's the background color and we'll make it be white for the text. And then when you hover over it, you're gonna to go to black. And again, you'll have white for the text. You don't have to keep doing that, by the way. You'll have spotted that and gone, why is he doing that? Once you've picked white, unless you're changing it, you don't have to do it again. Again, this is one of those things where a little bit force of habit, where I like to just put them in because I feel like it can be quite vital for maybe someone else who might take over the website or looks after it. Don't always assume that you're going to get a care plan or a maintenance package to look after it. Don't assume that. And when we go to the variations, which is what we have here. Now, please bear in mind, on this Roma bag, we have three variations, which is why we're getting this. If you did not have variation, as we don't on most of them, you would not get this appearing. But because it's a, because it's um, available to us now, we can do. Now, what if when you come to build, though, this happens whereby, let me just save this for a moment, you actually see a completely different product. This is what you do. So let's say it showed one of the casual bags. You go over to settings in your bottom left. You go to preview items. And then over here, you hit the X and you go and put in a different bag. So this is what happens if I type in all terrain. This is what I see. So I might go, hey, yeah, this looks really good and just move on and walk by. And I take a note of the fact that that is in green, okay, 50 in stock. If I go back over here now and I change that to be the Roma bag because I need to be able to see the variation because I need to stylize it. It's good, to be a, it's good to modify and build things now rather than revisiting later on. That being said, I do revisit things quite a bit as well. Anyway, let's go over to the variation. Now, what you can do here is very, very limited and it is a little bit annoying as well. Even if I go over to the advanced tab and I scroll down and say, we'll make it all white, it won't. It's still going to leave that as grey. Let me just show you what happens if I was to make it blue. That's what it does. It then it it because what you have here is a bit of an overlay going on over the top. And it is, for me, really annoying because I don't need it to be that big. I really don't like this at all, especially with how the word is moved over to the left. I mean, if I go over here and I go to, I mean, let me show you again. If I go to variation, the spacing is more to do with the up and down kind of thing. And the width is the width of the box and all of that. Um, if you go to advanced and I go, okay, well, give me a left like that. It, it starts to get really, really ugly and annoying. Let's first get rid of that gray color there because again, you know, I, I don't like it. What you need to do is make sure you're on the add to cart, go to advanced, go down to where you have custom CSS, click that, and then paste in this little bit of code over here. Um, you can instantly see what it's done as soon as I pasted it. It's gonna remove the color. And if I was to change this one to be like that, you can actually have different colors in. So if you wanna have like a black and a dark gray next door to one another, you can actually do that. Let's just pop that back to be white. We still have the slight problem though in that this is like way over to the left-hand side. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna add in a little bit extra, which is text align to the left and a padding left, I'm gonna make a zero as well. Now the text is all the way over. I'm gonna change my label because the size is a little bit small. Let's just make sure it's definitely on a railway. Go over here to the size, make sure it's a 1.2 as well. Uh, make the weight be a lot smaller than that. I think 400 is okay. And I'll just go for letter spacing one as well. Go down to custom CSS and we've already done a little bit to it. I'm gonna add in a little bit more and I've gone for padding top 18.5 pixel just to move it into the center there. And that's basically it. <laughs> that's all I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna leave a little bit of space there because you'll notice that when we come to do the variation, it adds in a little bit of text. So you might wanna keep that clear. One thing that is very um, evident though is that this all does look a little bit cramped up. So let's just go over to our pricing one, zero out. And I'm gonna say, give me about 30 uh, pixels spacing from the top. It is a very good idea to use EM, REM, and if you're trying to build a responsive website, it's a good idea to use Clamp as well. I am going to cover that in a later on right at the end when I start to talk about better responsiveness, but I just want to get through building a decent single product template. I'm going to keep these share icons actually because I think they're not a bad little feature to have. Let's just drop these in over here as well. 
And you can see what we've got going on with our layout at the moment in the second container. I've just added in a bit of top margin as well, just to put the share bit down there. And I'm going to say centralize it so it pushes everything down. Go back to my advanced and I'm now going to get rid of that padding over there. And that's looking a little bit better in terms of layout, especially with where the buttons currently sit as well. Go and check how it looks on the mobile. So this is now the view on the mobile. Remember the containers brought over the sizing. So the parent containers got the uh, 2020 on the left and right. Again, you know, once you do it once, just reuse the same elements again in a way because it's currently set as a row. Everything is in the center. Now, at this point, you might think, why don't, well, I'll just align the items and it doesn't do anything. You do have to get your head into gear with the way Flexbox containers work. I'm now going to hit start. OK, so it's because we're on a row, start means left. OK, because you're looking at and going, well, it's, it's in the center, you know, well, you know, that, is that right? Well, no, think of it. If you were to now hit end, it actually takes you to the end of the row, the start of the row. OK, and it's, it's you've got to get used to the way these items are positioned. I would definitely say the typography for the text here needs to be shrunk down to be a one when you're on the mobile. The header is okay because that followed through what we did before. Everything else here is okay, uh, except this really ugly looking uh, share items. Let's just go and address that. And that's looking okay. So now let's go over here. Let's now duplicate this container that we've got because we know it's looking okay. I'm going to get rid of the header, obviously. I'm going to get rid of, I'm going to completely get rid of actually this container that we have because we're now just going to have one container like that. I want to make sure that this is a hundred percent all the way across. Get rid of that. Get rid of the price. Get, I mean, I mean, you could keep the share as well if you want. You could still repeat yourself at the bottom. But I think once is more than enough. Let's just clear that out. And then over here where we have the text, uh, the short description, let's get rid of that as well. And we can bring through other items like additional item product data tabs is the most obvious one to bring over. So this is now where you know, I mean, if there's any of the further details, you are going to get that. The nice thing is that everything is nicely laid out. The only real thing I'm going to do is just make sure that we have consistency in what we're doing. By the way, um, when it says default, that will default to your global font. However, out of force of habit, I like to just be sure and always make sure I pick railway just in case the theme or the website accidentally goes and picks something else. Uh, so we're just going to go with a 1.2 for the REM. The last thing we're going to add at the bottom over here is uh, related products. So we didn't set any upsells or cross sells, which you could use. So if you had set any, like, look, if I drop this in here, you're not going to get anything. I didn't set any. So when we were doing the WooCommerce products, if I had said, if you buy this, you should also get this bag or this hat as well. We didn't do that, so I'm going to get rid of that. And what I'm going to do instead is just bring over product related like that. Um, I really don't like the look of this in terms of the wording and the sizing. So what you should do is just go in and change it. Just change the font sizes a little bit just to match everything we've got. Uh, other things you may want to take into account is that when you scroll down, you do have all of these. Well, the heading we've done, you know, the box, if you want to change that as well, the sizing you can do. I'm going to leave that. Now, when you hit update or publish for the first time, you are going to get asked to go, well, what's your condition? You could set up a different single product template per category or even for individual items. So over here, I could say actually uh, for the rucksack category, show this look for the casual, have a completely different look where you might have a background image. I mean, I haven't put background images in. I've been quite bland in a way with what I've done, but you could have like a curly pattern or something going on. So I'm just going to leave this as all products for now and I'm going to hit save and close. So if we now go back over to our shop that we have here and I now go and pick, say, the corporate bag, you're going to get this. I mean, look, the images here are a bit ridiculous. I, do you remember when I created it? I did say I on purpose went and picked, inc you know, like images of various sizes to highlight how that's not always a good idea. But you can see what we get there. And when you scroll down, you've got the other items. And if you go back and go and find a variable item, which is this one, go and like pick your colors and, you know, things change and you got your very, um, your other items. That 
bit of CSS code I gave you there makes a major bit of difference in my opinion on how you can make this look. That is our single product template finally done. There's still more to do. We haven't even touched the cart or the checkout page. I mean, look, if I was to go over here and say, okay, let's go for the all terrain bag. I add it to my cart and then I go and view the cart. This is how the cart page looks at the moment. And it's not bra it's not br color branded, and it, you know I think it, it's a little bit boring. What I do want to highlight though is this little bit over here, where currently we have a flat rate of two ninety nine. If you remember when I did the WooCommerce settings, I said that if your cart value was uh, fifty pounds, then it is free. Now if I go and put this to three, and I update the cart, look at this. This is what happens you now have to pick the free shipping. Otherwise, you might accidentally go and pay, pay it. That is not good. And we're gonna work on the cart and checkout page and then later on, I'm gonna show you a code snippet that's really easy and simple to apply, whereby you can make this automatically only show the free shipping item and not the flat rate once you hit the 50 pound threshold.